I, I don't call myself a reporter anymore. I'm, a, I'm an opinion writer. But and what I, what I was in Egypt was uh, I was an Egyptian fighting for freedom, and being on Mohammed Mahmoud Street, I was also the person who went to university there because it's also the street that has the main gate to the American University in Cairo. The campus has moved now, but when I was a student at AUC, the American University in Cairo, the campus main gate was on this street. And so I was tweeting. I mean, at one point, my friend Megid said to me, Mona, your life is more important than tweets. Stop <laughs> tweeting. <laughs> because you know, there, there, was gu there was gunfire, there was tear gas, there was sirens. It was insane. And I was tweeting things like, this is so surreal. This is the street that I walked every day to go to university. And it's just full of sirens and the orange air of tear gas. So I was there as, as many things. And I think this is, and, and social media for me is both my biggest institutional backer because I'm freelance, I'm independent. So if I get into trouble, I don't have the Washington Post to back me up. I don't have Reuters to back me up. It's just me. So it's Twitter that backs me up. And that night, Twitter saved my life. Because while the, they were beating me and I was protecting my head like this, I had my phone in my hand and it fell. And I remember very clearly as they were dragging me towards the interior ministry, I said, my phone, my phone. And on, you know, on some level, I don't know if I thought that they were going to say, OK, boy, stop beating her. She's going to get her phone. And then we're going to take her to the interior ministry. Because I really wanted my phone. And it wasn't that I wanted my phone because I'm addicted to Twitter. I wanted my phone because I realized on a very deep level that it was my lifeline to the world. So I lost my phone. It was lost in, in, in the ground. And every minute between that time and three hours later, when I finally had access to a phone, I had no idea what could happen to me. I thought, they're going to charge me with being a spy. They're going to kill me. They're going to rape me. They're going to put me, send me to jail forever. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. But three hours into the detention, someone, uh, some activists came into the room where I was held. Who was they came to discuss a truce between the security forces and protesters. And they weren't really paying attention to me by this point. And so I asked a uh, uh, an activist to use his smartphone, and he got me on Twitter. And I sent out a tweet, beaten, arrested, interior ministry. And I swear to God, his phone died right after I sent it out. He was like, oh my God, <laughs> his battery died after I sent out this tweet. And it was a matter of seconds, because his phone could have died, and I would not have been able to send out this tweet. And I was told afterwards that after I sent out this tweet, 15 to 20 minutes later, hashtag free Mona was trending around the world. So Twitter saved my life.